Hey YouTube, just getting into web development and wondering which CSS framework to use or have many years of experience in figuring out what this Tailwind CSS thing? Well, I've done a lot of research so you don't have to and we're gonna get into the details about what the difference between Bootstrap and Tailwind CSS is so that you can understand which is better for your use case. So let's get started. Bootstrap, which has been around for quite a number of years, is an HTML, CSS, and JavaScript framework. Uh, it was built to be responsive and mobile first and has a great browser compatibility. So it has all across, you know, the different Safari, Opera, uh, Edge, Chrome, Firefox, all the different main browsers that you'll need to develop against. And this type of framework is also called a UI kit where it gives you pre-built interfaces like buttons, components, and other nice features like you know an autocomplete search or some nice uh, little windows to expand and collapse whenever you want to build a frequently asked questions page or something like that. There's other UI kits in the market. Uh, two really well known ones are Foundation and Bulma. Uh, are just like two off the top of my head, and those also serve the same purpose. Bootstrap has been around for a long time, so let's get into the history. So Bootstrap or Twitter Bootstrap, as is also called, was developed by Mark Otto and Jacob Thornton at Twitter, and as it was used as a framework to encourage consistency across internal tools there. Uh, the project was originally named Twitter Blueprint, uh, which I found out in researching this, which is kind of cool, and it was renamed to you know Twitter Bootstrap, and then eventually just became Bootstrap. It was released as an open source product in August, of 2011 on GitHub. And then by June of 2014, it was the number one project on GitHub. Today, it's the most used CSS, HTML, and JavaScript framework, and you see it all over the place. Let's get into how to install it. So as you can see on this page, this is the download page for uh, Bootstrap. If you just go to getbootstrap.com, then you'll be landed here. There's a couple of different ways. The typical one is through their CDN. So you just put something in the top of your file here for like a script. Um, and you can see that it's generally preferred to do it this way, which is different from how Tailwind CSS operates. But if you wanted to do something through a package manager like NPM, then it gives you that option here. So you can do it a bunch of different ways, but the preferred way is through the CDN and you know, in WordPress sites or things like that, that's the typical approach. The current version is 5.1.3, and you can see that you know this has all your links. This is on npmjs.com. So if you're downloading from the npm version, this is where you'll go. And you can see the unpacked size is about eight and a half megabytes. It's active, so it has, you know, 15 days ago was the last publish, which is good to see. No surprise since it's one of those the most used uh, frameworks on the internet. And the weekly downloads is, you know, in the millions there. So if you wanted to reduce this package size, you can do that by removing pieces um, yourself and making sure that you're not including the full bootstrap package. Uh, it's known to be bloated. Uh, which is kind of some of the cons, which we'll get into later in our comparison, but at least you know where you're starting from. Another cool way to work with CSS is by actually changing the CSS on the subscribe button. Hit that, change it from red to white or whatever color it needs to be, and we'll get into the Tailwind piece. So now for Tailwind, this is called a utility first CSS framework, and that's what the creators and the company that created the framework call it. It restricts you and gives you only CSS that has like good defaults in an effort to, you know, restrict the infinite number of possibilities that you could have with CSS. Some of these include like nice defaults for box shadow or for underlining or other components. It is not something that is pre-built. It's not a UI kit. Uh, it is more of a library, but it still has that browser compatibility where it works across many browsers and it's also mobile first. So it's really easy to add different media breakpoints so that you can break on different screen sizes and your web page looks great. One of the really awesome things that was introduced is the just-in-time compilation, which helps with a lot of custom CSS and also performance in your development environment. There's other frameworks that are similar to this that are Material UI or Tachyons are kind of similar examples. And so let's get into the history about Tailwind CSS. So Tailwind CSS was originally created by Adam Wathan 
And it was he founded a company around it, which is the Tailwind Labs company. The first stable release was done in November 2017, and it's been adopted by tech giants like Mozilla and Algor- Algoria. Version 1.2 added support for CSS grid transitions and transformations and has been used extensively. It's been under active development. uh, And then there's also a component of a paid product, which is called Tailwind UI, which gives you those pre-built components. It's a paid product, but it seems like some people use that. Version two of Tailwind introduced uh, what we just talked about, like the just-in-time feature, where it made the developer experience, especially for large CSS files, much better. Today, it's seen incredible adoption and is one of the fastest growing CSS projects on the internet. All right, so let's get into how to install Tailwind CSS. If you land on Tailwind CSS docs installation, you could see that the preferred way is the opposite of what we saw with Bootstrap, where it's preferred to do the NPM install. And that's because Tailwind is gonna do a lot of optimizations for you and try and strip out uh, CSS using pure CSS at build time. So it's gonna minify that so you have a lot smaller of an artifact in your web application. There's other options. Again, you can you can still do the CDN version, but the NPM version is preferred to get those nice build time benefits. And then if we look at the NPM page, current version is 3024, and then the package size is about half the size of Bootstrap. The last published was about a day ago, so this is still also under active development, which is good to see. And then I mentioned, you know, like the pure CSS plugin uh, or feature, if you will, of Tailwind that tries to minify that package size for any CSS styles you're not using. So now that we've covered both Twitter, Bootstrap, and Tailwind CSS, which one is better for you? So some of the pros for Bootstrap are you have off the shelf components, you know that they work in multiple browsers, including mobile, so you don't have to fiddle with that. Uh, It's super fast at prototyping and you don't need to do any custom CSS. So if you're standing up a website, needing to do something for a demo, slot in some bootstrap and you're off to the races. Uh, Some cons is many of the sites look very similar. So (laughs) every, you can almost tell where bootstrap is used on many commercial sites. And it also takes a little bit of time to learn all the different, you know, shorthand for the different components for Bootstrap. You know, it's it's tough to differentiate yourself with, with Bootstrap. If you want more of a custom experience, then Tailwind is going to be where you should where you should look. They offer a bunch of off-the-shelf components using Tailwind UI, but really where most people are going to use it is in the developer experience where you have the shorthand of the fast styling, uh, which is one of the pros. You don't have to open up a separate file and fiddle with class naming. Think of when you're in your editor and you have to name a class and then create a new file and figure out you know, how to structure it and you're tabbing between those files. You don't have to do any of that with Tailwind CSS because Your CSS and HTML is right there in the same file. Uh, You have control over your page, and so you don't end up with uh, a page that looks exactly like another one. Any Tailwind CSS site can look wildly different from another one, and you're not constrained by UIKit. Some of the cons is you have to develop a lot more JavaScript. So some of those components that Bootstrap gives you for, you know, windowing and, and collapsing and and expanding different UI components, those don't come for free. You have to build some of those yourself. If you don't know CSS, I would not encourage you to start using Tailwind CSS because you have to understand at a base level what CSS is doing before you can start using the shorthand. Otherwise, you're just going to be in a circular dependency of not knowing how to develop. It takes time to learn, but it's easier to customize your larger applications. It's a much smaller package size, especially with that pure CSS. If you're looking for something that is off the shelf, ready to prototype, go with Bootstrap. If you want something long lived, that's gonna be great for your project. Go with Tailwind, give it a try. Do you know about any other CSS frameworks that are also beneficial or I should cover? Share in the comments and like and subscribe to this video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.